Welcome to another Sunday, another day that the Lord has blessed us with. Give us an opportunity that we could wake up, that we could glorify Him, that we could praise His holy name, for He is our God, our refuge. And we thank you for all that he does. Gracious Lord and all wise God, we come before you, giving you honor, glory, and praise. Yes, Magnify your precious name. Mm -hmm. For Lord, you deserve all the praise, yes. all the glory, and all the honor. Yes, Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, so let your word come forth this day. That it shall touch each and every one of us in the way that you would have it to touch us. That it will seep down deep within our heart. That it will nurture and that it will grow. And it will bless us that we may go out and bless others. Father, we pray that your spirit falls upon each and every pastor this day. Whomever is speaking your word, Lord. Let them humble themselves before you. And let your spirit speak through them. They may speak your word in clarity. And we thank you. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have the choir give us a selection.
Today's scripture is coming from Psalm 62, verses 1 through 8. I'll give everybody a moment to find it. my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down? This leaning wall? This tottering fence? Sure. They intend to topple, topple me with my lofty place, from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but with their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. Yes. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him. For God is our refuge. Amen. And now we'll have our prayer from Deacon Hall. Let the heart pray. O oh, gracious Father, and once again that we come, yes. giving your name the thanks and praise for the many blessings yes. that you've bestowed upon us. Mm -hmm. O oh, gracious Father, we can truly say that our good days outweigh our bad days. Yes. And we thank you, Lord. Yes. We come now with humble hearts, Lord, mm -hmm. when we realize from where our help comes from. We realize that you know what we stand in need of even before we act. And gracious Father, we ask you now to continue to shower your blessing upon us. Heavenly Father, help us to be strong. Heavenly Father, in these undying times, yes. we ask that you would go by the hospitals, Heavenly Father, and touch those that may be suffering from their illness. We ask that you go home, Heavenly Father, and touch those that are at home that have recovered. We ask those to ask you to touch those that don't know you and are part of that sin. Yes, yes. yes Father. And, oh, gracious Father, we just ask that you would just touch the man that's about to bring us to work. Yes. Uh -huh. Give him strength to endure. Yes. Heavenly Father, give him the wisdom to know how Heavenly Father to be. Uh -huh. And Heavenly Father, be guided by you. Yes. Oh, gracious Father, we just pray now for our families. We pray for those that still have their mothers and fathers. We pray for those that don't. Yes. We pray for the children, Heavenly Father, yes, Father, of each and every one of us. You know what they stand in need of, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. So we ask now that you would just bless them. Yes, Lord. Strengthen them and let them know, Heavenly Father, that somebody is praying for them. Mm -hmm. Now, gracious Father, as we go into the service, we ask that you would have your way yes. in our lives. Mm -hmm. yes. Let everything that be said and done here be pleasing in that sight. Yes, These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Hall. And now we have another selection from our choir.
house of the Lord one more time. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. If you're thankful that God woke you up this morning, if you're thankful that God started doing the way, if you're thankful that there's nobody on the throne, him, Jesus, the Christ, you ought to be satisfied, you ought to be sanctified, you ought to glorify his name. Thank God for what he has done. Amen. Amen. As we come now for another hour of worship, we thank those who have participated in worship. We thank God for the praise team. We thank God for Deacon Hall. We thank God for uh, Mr. Cook. Uh, even on his birthday, amen, happy birthday, Sunday night, who decided not Robert to come in and, and, and spend time with the Lord. Here's the beautiful thing. I see Deacon Trollinger has made his way. God bless you. Amen. Always good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, before I get started, I, I, I want to say that uh, we will continue to um, keep those in prayer on our prayer list, amen, and we're going to add to that prayer list um, uh, Miss Rhonda Pella, amen, Sister Rhonda Pella, who took sick, we're going to keep her and her family in prayer, mm -hmm. uh, our own deaconess Sarah Covington, we're going to keep her in prayer, amen, Continue to keep Brother Michael Price in prayer and even add Brother Dennis in there. Sister Gail um, Lavin, amen, we're going to keep her in prayer. Continue to keep um, um, uh, uh, Minister uh, Brother um, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy Petit, yeah, remember Brother Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And remember uh, my friend and Brother Benji Isley and my aunts Aura Shaw and uh, Laverne King, amen, and all the members, deacons, saints and friends of Archers Grove and all of the churches and those who are called by the Lord's name. We will continue to pray. The Bible said men ought to always pray and not faint. And I believe that we're not going to get smaller in these times. Not to hold you long, we're going to commence this morning in the epistle or the letter of Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2. That's the New Testament book of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Pray for me. The enemy wants to hinder my body and hinder my speech, but he and I go. If I have to give y'all smoke signals and sign language, amen, we're going to get this thing across this morning. We're right about it. Right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Those who may be, I'm not sure, on Facebook Live, on our phone line, God bless you this morning. Uh, continue to uh, keep the gospel going and the words of God in the airwaves. Amen. Yeah. Second Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 2. We begin reading at verse 1. The Bible reads, Apostle Paul, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is pinned this way. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as it is from us, as though the day of the Lord had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And then the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know uh, what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. And the Lord will consume the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteousness, unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and for this reason God would send them strong delusion, that they may, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. As you take your seat, I want to speak to you from a subject 
uh, this morning, don't be surprised. Uh, Reverend, you, you can give me that, that mic there. And I told you he's fighting hard, ain't he? That's all right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. The Apostle Paul is the writer of this book. The date of this book is uncertain. Some say it's AD 50 or 52. Some say it's right after he had written First Thessalonians. And some say it was even at a later date. Uh, my, my own personal preference is that he wrote this book shortly after he wrote 1 Thessalonians, and I'll explain it to you shortly. The purpose of this book was to assure the believers that even though they were facing persecution, that God was using trouble to make them strong, that God was using trouble to refine the believer and to teach endurance that even in hard times and in a dying, corrupt world, that you still can have high standards and hold uh, to the hand of a good God. Yeah. He was also teaching them that persecution is not come to destroy the believer, but to seal the believer, amen, in the fact that one day we would be with God. Yeah. That this book that Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica, the city of Thessalonica is still now uh, in uh, the country of Greece, and it's the Thess Thessalonica, like the, like the Nike tennis shoe at the ending of the step. This is a great large city in Macedonia. It was founded by the general consignment after the death of Alexander the Great. Um, this great city was a metropolis with a population of 200,000 people and great trade. Uh, the Great Ignatius Way was a great trade center. From the Adriatic Sea all the way to the Middle East, this uh, particular city had great commerce. And Paul had evangelized this city. Y'all know, after Acts 16, when Paul got in trouble at Philippi, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, what happened was he, he messed up the business of people. And I told y'all earlier, when you mess with people's money, uh, it's not their liberty, it's not their freedom. When people think that you are interfering with their money, they will hurt you. Amen. So Paul and Silas ended up in the Philippian jail. Y'all know the story. Uh, that they were they sung at the same place at midnight, and an earthquake came, amen, and opened the jail doors, and Paul and Silas were saved. But even after they was beaten and whipped, they still was banished from the city of Philippi, and they ended up in Thessalonica. The Bible says in the book of Acts, today in 17, that they ended up in Thessalonica, and they ended up in a man's house by the name of Jason. And through their preaching, the Bible says that they turned the world upside down. In other words, people were living wrong, and the gospel brought in uh, righteousness. The Bible, the Bible brought in holiness, amen. The word of God brought it in so beautifully that in the beginning, in 1 Thessalonians, Paul said, and even in 2 Thessalonians, Paul said, the reason I'm writing to you in 1 Thessalonians is because you all love each other. Even in times of persecution, you all are showing each other as a church that you love each other. Not only that, y'all have so much of God's love in you that even the people that are persecuting you, you have enough love to show them that, that they don't have to be your enemy, but they can be your friend. Paul also said, y'all are holding up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, despite also I commend you. But then he comes back and he said, I don't want you to be soon shaken because trouble came. Amen. Trouble came because the men who were in Philippi followed uh, Paul to Thessalonica. And I want to tell you that that sometime when God saved you, when you get saved and you come into the church and you start doing what's right, don't think your past going to drop away. Amen. Because the devil will send folk from your past when you are praising God to sit in the other pew to look you in the face to see if your praise is genuine. Don't let it call you in the choir when you're facing your accusers. Amen. And you saying amen and you look out there and see somebody that remember you when can you still lift up holy hands hands to God, boy, that's no closer with the magnifying glass that when you preach it, God's word, amen, when folk tell you he's supposed to be a preacher, amen, they're watching everything you do, can you still live right, can you still stand on the blood, blood stained battle of Jesus Christ, I just don't be surprised, amen, don't be surprised, don't be surprised when folk run down on you, 
a surprise birthday party. Amen. You can throw y'all guard, can't you? Uh, it, it don't have to be a birthday party, but they give you a party at work, amen, for your service. And you don't realize what they're going to do. And you walk in and folks shower you a gift and they got a cake and they lifting up your accolades, amen. It's a surprise, ain't it? It's a surprise for people you don't expect to, uh, that's been watching you, amen, and begin to commend you for the work that you do. You don't know that they're watching you, but it surprises you when they come up and begin to tell you uh, how you influence your life. That's a surprise. Big and hard and I was talking how to be blindsided, amen. I used to play football, amen. It's something to see the hit coming, and sometimes it can come hard. It depends on who hits you. You still going to feel the hit, amen. You're going to feel the effects of it. It's nothing like being blindsided by a hit, amen. They're like driving down the road to see a car wreck coming, and you run into a car, amen. That's one thing, but to be T-bone and blindsided from the side, that's a whole other thing, amen. And so what I'm saying is it's easy for people in the world, amen, to persecute you and to mess you over. But it's something when people in your own house mess you over and talk about you and treat you like anything but a child of God. There's another thing when people from the household of faith who say they love the Lord and they heard his cry and they pity every groan and they talk about you like a dog and ruin your reputation and the rest of them building up they want to tear down, amen. That is a surprise. But you ought not be surprised because it's been happening for a long time. In January uh, 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 6, amen, I'm coming down the stairs and I'm watching folks storm the U.S. Capitol. Amen. And I was surprised. But I shouldn't have been surprised, but one thing, because I watched the news and I read it and I heard they said they were going to do it. But I still was surprised when they was bold enough to do it, amen. And then to do it on national TV, the people who say that they are of law and order, the people who say that they are patrons of the country, the people who say that we should desecrate sacred monuments, the same people who said that marks into the capital, amen, and, 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 and tore down things, amen, and, and lifted up flags, amen, and, 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 and I'll tell you this before I go on, people don't talk about the Lord anymore, don't be surprised, people don't worship God anymore, don't be surprised, people, uh, uh, we were talking about that one, that people don't honor the word of God no more, people talk more about Donald Trump than they do about Jesus Christ, don't be surprised at what's going on in the world, don't be surprised when the church will put more money into the building and they do the preacher or the praising of God. Don't be surprised when people worship everything but him and the Christ. Don't be surprised when the world goes to hell with a handbasket because we don't lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be surprised. Paul rushed the Thessalonica from Philippi. Trouble follows him to Thessalonica, but yet Paul still preaching the gospel. Amen. The church get, get changed and get established at Thessalonica and Paul leaves. It says he even sends Timothy back when he heard there was trouble to establish the church. Well, not establish, but to pastor the church and bring in some uh, evangelism, amen. And Silas even helped him, amen. And yet the people were surprised and shaken. They were surprised and shaken because people on the outside were accusing them of the trouble that was going on and people on the inside who promised to stand with them had started wavering and falling away. And they were surprised, amen. But Paul told them, he said, look, he said, from the first day I was with you, he said, uh, don't forget, in verse 5, he said, do you not remember when I was still with you that I told you these things? First of all, you shouldn't be surprised that stuff is happening because we already been told. And then as far as the preaching of the gospel, there's some things that the saints of God, y'all act like y'all have forgotten. And I know I'm not the only preacher, but I had my time to preach and tell you what does say the Lord. And you act like you're surprised when you reap what you sow. You ought not be surprised, amen, when you try to live right and folk turn away from you. You ought not be surprised. Paul said you ought not be surprised because I told you. Then Paul said in verse 6, and now you know it, uh, uh, what restrains it, that it may be revealed in its own time. In other words, you're going to see it. So why are you surprised, amen? I heard people saying that there are Black Lives Matter, that have been black folk on the capital, amen, that uh, 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 tear gas would have been everywhere. I'm not saying what has been said all week, but what I am telling you is you ought not be surprised. That ain't the first time that you've seen unarmed black people get shot. That ain't the first time you've seen people be unfairly and unjustly treated. It's not the first time you've seen it. All in all our history, we've seen it down through the years, and now here we are in 2020 and 2021 act like this is a surprise. This is not a surprise. It's not a surprise that you still got fans and uh, uh, girls and Methodist boys, amen. You ought not be surprised. 
you got hateful policemen and hateful citizens, you ought not be surprised. This is not the first time you've seen this. Paul said, because I not only told you, Paul said, you see what's happening. Verse 7, he said, you see it because the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Now, the mystery of lawlessness, and that's what you're seeing, lawlessness, a, a lack of respect for authority. You'll see it all the way across the board. Wives don't respect husbands and husbands don't respect wives. Let me talk to you. Preachers don't respect the congregation. The congregation don't respect the preacher. How do you expect God to flow in anything like that? He can't and he won't. Because he's given us the mandate to love him and to love each other. So it's up to us to make sure that this thing works. So I'm telling you that Paul says here that two things don't happen. Paul begins to tell the church in, in, in the first letter that you all have done well, that you are, 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 ought to stay together in the church, you ought to pray. Then he begins an eschatological or uh, end time program. He begins to tell them in chapter five, uh, I mean chapter one, uh, chapter five of the uh, uh, first book that, that, that the Lord is coming. And the way you know he's coming is there's going to be a loud voice with, uh, like that of an archangel. Y'all do know the story, don't you? He begins to explain the rapture of the church in chapter 5 of the first book. But then he continues over in the book and he begins to lift them up in the second book. And then he begins to tell them what's coming. The mystery of lawlessness is coming. And then he says there's two things going to happen before this event comes. What do you mean? The day of the Lord. What is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord is not just a day that's going to happen. It's an event. It's something that's going to happen over a span or a period of time. The day of the Lord is when the Lord is going to come and judge the nations for not listening to him. The day of the Lord is when the Lord is going to stop all this foolishness. Amen. And all, everything that he's instituted, we disrespected marriage that was instituted by God. We disrespected government that came in in Noah's day. We are still disrespecting that. And we disrespecting the church where God said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And now we are in here disrespecting. God is saying, this going to come a time. But I'm going to put an end to all of that. But don't be surprised when it comes, because I'm getting ready to unfold to y'all when you're going to know it's coming. Paul gives you two things to let you know when it's coming. Paul says the first thing you got to realize that before it comes, that there's going to be a mystery of lawlessness. There's going to be an undue lack of respect all across the board, and you are going to see it cut. Y'all, and then, then, and then first John said, you already see it. Ain't it right? You, you already see it coming. You already see the way we act. People that get married today, stand before the preacher in love, say all their quotes, amen, do everything right, go through the honeymoon, and two weeks later they're ready to divorce. They don't know how to go through the pain and the suffering because they didn't hear from better or for worse. Amen. Just like the church, people have tricked you to make you think that when you join the church, amen, that you are not going to suffer even after Jesus said, you will suffer persecution when you trust me. Amen. He said that, that the teacher, uh, uh, that the student is not greater than the master. And if the master suffered, you and I are going to have to suffer a little bit. Amen. So Paul said the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. The apostasy, the falling away, amen, the great rebellion, the terrible day, the day that God will come. That day is going to be a manifested when, when, when evil manifests itself against the power of God. You already seen it. I told you, you already seen it, amen. And so one, you're going to see it when people turn away. And then the second was when the man of sin revealed. Now what was going on in this book, Paul had to rewrite to them. In the first book, he commended them, right? In the second book, he came back, and most scholars say that Paul didn't write the second book because it don't have the same model to it. But they don't understand that the narrative had changed. Amen. That the church was being the church despite all persecution. But in the second, that there were false teachers who came in, and they didn't just lie. They lied and said, Paul said. Y'all ever had somebody spoke to your friend? And they go back and tell somebody that you said. Yeah. They, they, they said that Paul said that the day of the Lord had already passed. So people in the church were, were felt like they didn't have no hope because they thought they had missed the rapture and the Lord had already come. All right, let me go ahead and put it the way I feel it because y'all not feeling it. Because y'all 
still sleepy, amen. When I saw what happened on the Capitol, I wasn't surprised because I've seen some mess happen. But what had happened was I've seen so much evil in the last two years that I couldn't believe or start to wonder that the Lord already came and I left behind and don't know that he's already come. And I, am I still preaching that God is not here? Am I still saying that the Holy Spirit is not amongst us? Am I still praying that God is not moving from heart to heart and breath to breath? Has the Lord already come and I don't know it yet? Am I surprised that I think this way? No, because of what I see. And you all are seeing the same thing to make you doubt sometimes your faith. And I'm going to say it so you won't be a liar. Sometimes you doubt because you of the things that you see. You wonder. You wonder, is God really with you? Does God really care? Is God really coming? Well, I can tell you right now that everybody that's acting like he ain't coming, they're going to be surprised. <laughs> We're not going to be surprised. They are going to be surprised. That when the same God they say that they know that they know, and yet they treat folk any kind of way, they gonna be surprised when He show up. Like go surprise, 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 surprise. The Lord is gonna show up. Let me give you the scripture before I get to that toast. Just before I give you that, this thing's gonna happen. Things gonna happen is that everybody's gonna be lawless. Everything gonna be lawless. There's gonna be no respect. Y'all see it. People don't respect anything anymore. That's the first sign. And the second sign is that when the Holy Spirit is moved out the way, and we won't see it if we believe in the Lord, because He's coming to get us. That, that's the way the, the book reads. Don't, don't listen to that. The book reads that way. But, but, but the thing is that the man of sin, the man of perdition, is going to show up. And John says he's already here. Let me show him how I'm People believe uh, that. Uh, because somebody said that the election was false. Some people think it was false. Some people think that the people vote. But for the few that think that the election was false, they was willing to fight and to fuss and to disrupt. Oh, y'all seen it in your church in your own house. When you lay down the rules of your house, there's always one that's going to disrupt it. Ain't that right? In the church, we can have a meeting in the church and say what we're going to do as, as, as a conglomerate of the church. And one or two people in the meeting won't say anything and leave the church and talk about the church and everybody in the church when you should have said it while you were there. Ain't nothing but apostasy. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 and 2. He said a lot of times people going to fall away from the faith. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Nobody read it for yourself. Verse 1 and 2 said people going to fall away from the faith. They're going to give heed to seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils. Amen. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having a conscience seared with a hot iron. Have you ever seen a time and day where people don't have mercy or compassion because they don't have a conscience? Amen. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians said uh, that, that men will love them. I mean, Second Timothy chapter 3. That men will love themselves. Have you ever seen it more than today? Where men will love themselves and they will be covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous, without natural affection, truth breakers, amen. And people won't listen to sound doctrine because they have no God in them. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I'll ask you to turn there, but if you want to, you can turn there and read it, what I say it to you. That he, Paul said the same thing in the book of Romans uh, chapter 1, amen, around verse 21. He said that God gave them up to a reprobate mind. God give folk up to a reprobate mind today because if you keep on doing what you're trying to do, after a while, God gonna say, you go ahead on and do what you want to do, amen, and, 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 and that's it, that's fine, and he turns them out, so in the book of Romans, amen, I, I want to read it to you, amen, I, I got time to read it, if you want to click off, click off, if you want to walk out, walk out, but I'm going to read this to you, Paul said in verse uh, uh, 24, Romans chapter 1, verse 24, Paul says, therefore, God gave them over. He gave them over because the wrath of God was revealed against the godliness and the wicked. I'm not reading that book, I'm telling you, that he leads to this. He said that sin has taken over humanity and human beings have suppressed the truth and
and godliness and wickedness have taken over. So then he comes back, and, and that's why he says, because of this, verse 26, because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even the women exchanged natural sexual relations for the unnatural one. In the same way that men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust with one another, men committed shameful acts of one another and received themselves due to the penalty of error. Oh, just stop right there. Don't you think I'm trying to uh, uh, classify people? I'm just reading the word of God. But look, God covers everybody. Because he says, furthermore, just that they did not think it was uh, worthwhile uh, to, 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 to keep the knowledge of God. So God gave them over to a depraved mind, a reprobate mind, so that they do what they ought not to have done. They have become filled with every wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossip, slanderers, God haters, desolate, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways to do evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no empathy. There's no love and no mercy. That's come from God the Father right there. Amen. That's what you are seeing right now. When you see a man stand up for the United the President of the United States of America and what he says, everybody listen to him. And he says, We're gonna go and take this uh, false election, and I'm gonna I'm going to march you down to the Capitol, amen. And when we get down there, we're not gonna be so nice. And y'all know what he did, he riled up people up and they got in there and they went down to the Capitol and he got in his motorcade and he went the other way. Old folk in the church said he threw a rock and he hit his hand. Amen. And he went his own way. And that's what folk will do if you're not careful. They'll pump you up to leave your church and you'll leave your church and they'll go on back to their church. They'll talk you out of your minds and they're still mad. Amen. They'll talk you out your job and they're still working getting a check. You got to watch folk who try to talk you out of doing what you know is the right thing to do. This man stood up, this man who said he's the president of law and order. He ain't nothing but lawless, amen. And I'm not just bashing the president, I'm telling you what it is. It's not just him, it's all the uppers that we have elected to go into office to stand for us and they don't. We still got bad education and they talk about everything else but giving children education. And then they don't, they try to give them a type of education now, we're doing everything virtual, but they know people don't have, uh, 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 uh what's called, uh, internet, amen. And so they don't out there as a policy, but you have people in rural areas that can't even go to school, therefore people are getting left behind. See, I'm still talking to you. That's the way the church is. Look at us. We stood here since March when they let us out of here. And some of us are still stood to preach the gospel. Some of us are still stood to sing the hymns of praise. Some folks are still giving money. Some folks are still testifying. And some folks are lifting one finger, but yet they still are, are fussing and fighting on it. Talk about what we are not to do and what we ought not to be doing, we ought to be lifting up the blood stained banner of Jesus Christ, preaching the word of God in season and out of season. Don't care if you come, don't care if you go, don't care if you leave, don't care if you talk, don't care if you pout. Got to preach, got to say, got to shout, got to run, got to jump, because I ain't surprised when God bless me, when he woke me up, when he feed me, when he keep me. I'm not surprised who God is. Sound up. The question I got for you is I get ready to leave for no more who you know. Is why do people choose the wrong path? Because that's a path. That's a choice. Yeah. Why do people choose to do the wrong path? Mm. Solomon said that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, and the end thereof is destruction. Yeah. Jesus said in Matthew 7 that there are uh, uh, two roads, uh, two gates, amen. There, 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 there's the narrow way, yeah. and there is the wide way. Mm -hmm. I can hear Deacon Joe Cousins saying that if Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. <laughs> Y'all hear me now? I'm trying to tell you that Jesus said that there is a narrow way, and there is a broad way. A whole lot of people taking the narrow way, and a lot of people taking the broad way. The narrow way, you're going to find a few people on there every now and again trying to do the right thing so it's going to get hard. Kind of like Corona, when you isolated by yourself, it seems like you by yourself, ain't nobody coming by, you can't go by and see nobody, it's a little trouble, ain't it? But that's what the narrow way is like every now and again, you're going to see a weary pilgrim every now and again. 
but the broad way. Everybody's up the broad way. Everybody's celebrating that they're right when they tell you to go home and keep your mask on and keep your social distancing and don't be running around. Folks still having parties. Ain't that right? Folks still have these big uh, glamorous events with no mask on, running around, doing whatever they want to do until the Roman hit their family. Why are you surprised that somebody is sick and you didn't follow directions? There's the true road, and there is the false road. I, I'm gone. Well, why do we make the choices that we make? Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden had two trees. One tree led to life, and the other tree led to death, yet they chose the tree that led to death. Why is that? Why is it that we do the same thing, that we uh, walk away from God and run with people of the world, and then we're surprised when we get the things that we reap the fruits of what we've done, amen, in the dark? Because the Bible is true that what you do in the dark, grandma just said, Jesus said it better, on the rooftop of dead in the dark. Yeah, y'all know it, y'all know it. Uh, you, you're going to see it in the light, is that right? Whatever you do in the dark, let me say it again, it, it's coming to the light. So people that's listening to me, Walk away from people. People that don't love the Lord, turn away from them. People that are doing all this evil and everything, you can love them, you can feed them, you can spend time with them, but don't be like them, don't keep coming with them, because you'll start acting like them. Some folk you got to turn away from, so don't be surprised when the Lord comes. Look at this right here, and I'm going. It said that Jesus came, and he was locked up. And when he got locked up, the people that locked him up were the ones who would read scripture looking for him to come. Then when he come, uh, rather, they were surprised of who he was. So what they did was they locked him up, sister Marie. Did they not? They locked him up. And they locked him up. They said that there was a man named Barabbas. They knew Barabbas was a thief. They knew Barabbas was a murderer. They knew Barabbas was a robber. But because of politics, they said, choose who you want. They said, do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? And the people said, uh, we want Barabbas and as far as Jesus, crucify him. And I'm trying to tell you that we crucify the Lord all over again when we don't act right and do the things that we are supposed to do. So don't be surprised that when he comes, he said, I never do you, you workers of iniquity. That same Jesus that they crucified. Let me tell you what they did to him, but they were surprised. Took the queen away, that they put his hands on the cross and nailed him on the left and nailed him on the right, and he still lived and never said a broken word. Took his feet and riveted it together, and he never really uh, complained or said a broken word. But y'all know the mistake they made. They did everything but put tape over his mouth. Because he was still able to talk. And I'm trying to tell you, as long as you're still able to talk, understand that death and life is in the power of the tongue. I might be sick, but I still can give God a praise. I might be talked about, but I still can lift up that holy name. You can ostracize me, call me everything but a child of God, but as long as I got breath in my body, I will lift up that name. He said, I, if I'll be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So people that try to hurt you, they surprised when you get up in the morning. You'll be surprised at the people that see you in the grocery store and on Facebook and all kinds of things because they surprised. They heard about what you went through. They know what you're going through. They know what folks are saying about you. And yet every morning you get up and you're thanking God for what you're doing. So the next time you see somebody you don't want to tell about, just let them know, yes, it's me. And don't be surprised at what he did for me. He did it for me for five reasons. The first reason is because God is good. The second reason is because God is good. The third reason is because God is good. The fourth reason is because God is good. And the fifth reason is because God is good. Don't be surprised. I'm gone. The church has been persecuted right now. People who should stand up for righteousness, mm -hmm. making all these vain, empty statements, religious bumper stickers and rhetoric, but there's no love in there. Right. Those of us who are charged to carry 
this word. We're supposed to be truth tellers. Yeah. And we're supposed to tell the truth yeah, yeah. to anyone, yeah. whether they want to hear us or they don't want to hear us. Uh -huh. And we're supposed to tell it to them no matter what their position, yeah. no matter what they have, we're supposed to tell them yeah. what the Lord said. Y'all yeah. yeah. know why? I'm like Paul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ. Mm -hmm. For it's the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. So don't be surprised. I'm going to say it and I'm going to pray with God. Everybody in here with me now, don't be surprised that God loves you. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised that you made it through trouble. Don't be surprised that you made it through sickness. Don't be surprised that God put you on the job, he put you on the church, he put you in, the home he put you in. Don't, don't be surprised. He, he knew what he put in us. He put his love in us. He put his faith in us. He put his word in us. Yes. Amen, somebody. He put his power Amen. in us. Oh, yeah. And because he lives, yes. don't be surprised. I can face another day. Thank Michael Thompson ain't did. He sure ain't. But with God, I can do all things. Mm -hmm. Man, they ought to be doing this. No. We ought to be doing what God said, do Trust God. This day when I pray, give him everything. The whole world is in his hands. People saying they're going to come back on the 21st and get the inauguration and do the same thing they did on the 6th. That's right. If it happens, don't, don't be surprised. <laughs> don't be surprised if somebody calls you out your name. Don't be surprised if somebody gets you sideways. Ain't the first time you see it. Just be surprised at the way you react. Ain't it funny when you come into God, you don't go off like you used to? Ain't that funny? You worry a little bit, but you really do. You worry for a little bit. when you think about the goodness of the Lord? You don't worry like that no more. The sick got a procedure in the morning. You used to wear it all night long. Now I go to sleep. Because God be fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, don't be surprised. Thank you. Don't be surprised doctors won't be no. They got faith. You see, the whole lot of doctors got faith, amen. You go in and you lift up the Lord's name and don't worry about you too. Because he's he going to use every all his abilities to help you. But he's still wary, amen, because he understands that the power uh, uh, the heal is not in his hands, it's just the power to do the surgery. But when you walk in and say, Doc, it's going to be all right. <laughs> I'm praying for you last night. Praying for your family, Doc. Praying for the nurses. Praying for everybody in the hospital. Hallelujah. Yeah. Man, when you start acting like that, it's a, hey, truly, this is a child of the king. You know right? Yeah. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. As we come now, God, to lift you up, to thank you, to glorify you, you. despite what we see, despite what we feel, we know that the earth is yours, the fullness thereof, and we that dwell here in it. God, we trust you today. We know that wickedness don't do what wickedness does, and lawlessness is coming because you just said it. And we won't be surprised. Only thing we'll be surprised at, Lord, is that you have not come to get us. Because your word said that if it wasn't 40 days being short and you coming to get us, that even the very elect would be full. Those you have elected and called and chosen, God, we ask you that you come see about us, Lord. That in your due appointed time, when you say, even though you came in the first advent, we are looking for the second advent of you to come. Cover your people with the blood of Jesus. Heal, deliver, and set free. God, you know we got many amongst us who are sick. Sick in body, sick in mind, sick in spirit, sick, Lord. This land is sick. People are sick. The mentality of the world is sickness, sin, and lawlessness. Lord, have mercy. Look upon us, God, as we call on your name. Those in the church, turn from our ways and seek your face. God, we ask you to have mercy. God, that you would send deliverance and you would send healings. Heal your people. Heal marriages, heal money, heal children, heal grandbabies, heal father. In the name of Jesus, until we get back to your will and get back to your way. 
Heal your church, Lord. Heal your preachers. God knows of us who got tired when we keep preaching the word. We don't see change, but yet we know what you say is going to happen. God, increase our faith. Help your deacons, God, to continue to pray. Continue to love. Can't visit. That's a sad thing, but we can't call. We can't show up. We can't trust you. Help us, Lord. Help your Christian friends who can't walk across the street like they normally do and hug their neighbor. But yet we can set up a prayer. Yet we can set up a packet across the street. Yet we can do something, God. Help us, Lord, until we get better. Yeah. Give us for our sins. Have mercy on our souls. God, I love you today. And I pray for your people this day is that the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the